Richard Oldner here and welcome to the channel. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff before we even get going. Today we're taking a look at a very cool motor. It is a 2.2 liter Dodge turbo motor circa 1984 that I got from the wrecking yard. We're going to do a leak down test to find out if the motor is even ready, if it even qualifies to dyno test. In this video, I'm going to take you step by step as I do a leak down test on our 2.2 liter Dodge turbo motor, the one that I got from the wrecking yard. No matter how much you pick and choose when you're at the wrecking yard, sometimes you get a good one, sometimes you don't. That's why I like to do a leak down test before I put them up on the dyno and find out if they have any pop. When I go to the wrecking yard and find a new candidate for the dyno, one of my mottos is if it spins, it wins. The problem with that is it can spin and I can still not win. There are a lot of things that can go wrong, even though the motor still spins around physically. So what I like to do is I need to find out if the motor has compression. Now it needs several things to run. It needs air, it needs fuel, it needs spark, but it also needs compression. Now there are two different ways to check the compression. We can obviously do a cranking compression test, but the problem is since it's, this is on an engine stand, it makes it more difficult. I can put it up on the dyno and use the starter motor on the dyno to spin it around and do a cranking compression test. But even before I do that, what I can do before I go to all the trouble putting it up on the dyno is we're gonna do a simple leak down test. Now to do that, we've got this fancy leak down tester. This one is from Total Steel. There are a bunch of different ones available. And what it does is we are gonna supply air pressure to the motor. We can use this gauge to see how much air pressure we're supplying. The second gauge tells us how much of that air pressure is actually leaking out. How much is it leaking by, for instance, the rings? How much is it leaking by the valves? And that'll tell us if this thing has compression. And if it does, that gives us a good idea that we can go ahead and put it up on the dyno. To get the motor ready and prep for our leak down test, we need to do a couple things. We need to take off all the plug wires, we need to remove all the spark plugs, we need to rotate the motor around until number one piston is up at top dead center so we can start our leak down test. Let's get going. If this is the first time pulling the plugs on motor you got from the wrecking yard, make sure to check them out. How do they look? Is one of them damaged? Is it soaked with fuel? Is it soaked with oil <laughs> or anything else? Look at them. On these, they all look like they're pretty good. They all look like they've been firing. It all looks fairly even. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on our leak down test. So I've got the number one cylinder up at top dead center. You can see I was taking, I was kind of giving it a feel to find out when it was pushing compression up, when it stops doing that, it's up or near top dead center. So I'll go ahead and hook up our leak down tester and find out how it's doing. So you can hear a little bit of a leak down. It's not much. This gauge is at 100. This one's at about 12%. So given that this is a tired old turbocharged junkyard motor and we have no idea how they treated it, that's actually fairly good. We check number one, let's move on to the rest. So we're here, here we have number two cylinder. Now you can go in the firing order. I just like to go one, two, three, four. So we're at 100. Again, this one's at, uh, you know, 12 or so, looking pretty good. So 
So number three is actually a little bit better. We're at 100% there. Well, about eight or nine percent, so that was a little better than the others. You can hear the leak down a little bit. Like I said, this thing might seal up a little bit after it's running, but these are actually looking pretty good. So we got one more to go, fingers crossed. So one of the things that can happen when you're putting air pressure in here, if you don't have the piston right at TDC and you start supplying air pressure to it, it can actually push the piston down and push it back the other way or down in the direction that it's going. You'll see the motor will move around and you just put it back into position. Not a big deal. Okay, it looks like number four is also pretty good. We're at like a hundred there. And then we're looking at, you know, in the eight or nine percent leak down. That's actually pretty good. So three and four are looking a little better than one and two, but none of them bad. I mean, this is a 1984 turbo 2.2 .2 liter, so we have no idea how it was treated or what kind of condition it would be in. I'm actually liking the results here. This is a good leak down test. I think that this thing is gonna run. I think it's gonna run well. I think it's all gonna come back in and we might do another leak down after we've run a few tests and see if it actually is a little bit better after it runs. But now let's take a look at a couple of other problems we have to solve on this motor before we run it. Before we can dyno, we're definitely gonna to have to take care of this. This is a hole, it's kind of wore through the aluminum. This is for the water pump. Now I don't see any of these housings in the wrecking yard, so I won't be able to replace that after order one, get some from a friend or something. But what happened here is the guy had previously epoxied this. It looked like it had some heavy gauge wire or maybe a block heater or something in there and they had epoxy over it. I may epoxy back over this thing just to run it on the dyno, but you know, I'm definitely gonna have to get another housing. I showed this before on a previous video, but if you see, the block plugs are out of it, and here's why, because they look like this. Yeah, those weren't sealing anymore. But, I went and got new ones. The problem is, these are actually the wrong size. So this part number, right here, 555030, or 0, yeah, 030, these are different sizes, unfortunately. This is just a little bit smaller than this, so it just pushes right in, and it definitely won't seal. So I'm going to have to fix that tomorrow. Not a problem, though. I've got to go back to the auto parts store to pick up some other things. So this will be an easy fix. Hopefully, we'll have the right ones. Because this thing was probably in the wrecking yard for the fire that it had, um, I'm definitely going to have to replace the injectors. We want to do that anyway so that we can, you know, step our game up and run bigger injectors. I need to check and make sure that this fuel rail is still sound. I'll check it for leaks. We'll put bigger injectors in there and hopefully we'll be off and running. Before we can run this thing, I'm definitely gonna have to fix a couple of these silicone couplers. That's already worn through. So that'll definitely be a big vacuum leak. I mean, it, it might help the thing breathe so it doesn't have to breathe through the tiny little throttle body. But a new coupler there, not a problem. And there's probably, I'm gonna check this other coupler down here too, because we might have the same problem. I've got oil and a new filter for it, so that shouldn't be a problem. I'm going to look into getting colder plugs for this thing as well. I don't know what the factory plugs are or what these are. I'll have to take a look, but we're going to run, run colder plugs when we turn the boost up. A couple of the plug wires don't look good. I'll replace the wires. We'll get a new cap and a rotor also because, you know, it's always start, good to start fresh. So everything looks like it'll work out pretty well. Far and away, my biggest problem is finding the... I need a bell housing for this 2.2 liter, and they have them in the 2.2 to 2.5 Dakotas. Uh, you obviously have to have a manual trans and that. I'm having a hard time finding that, but as soon as we locate that, we should be able to run this baby. Okay guys, what do we learn in our step-by-step -step leak down process on our 2.2 liter Dodge turbo motor? The first thing that we learned is that you're always gonna run across problems no matter what happens. Before we put a motor up on the dyno, we like to find out, does it have the pop that we need to run it up on the dyno? Our 2.2 liter actually looks pretty good. It had fairly even and consistent compression on all the cylinders, which we like to see. That means as soon as we solve all these other problems, including getting the bell housing, getting the flywheel, fixing the leaks, yada, 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 solve all these problems, we can put our 2.2 liter motor up on the dyno 
and make some noise. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.